so many, you know, one of so many people on here on this earth, one of so Israel. many people that have lived on this earth. But God is, uh, you're, you're a, a special possession to the Lord. So sometimes we just need a reminder, don't we, who we are to the Lord. Well, the Lord uh, gave me some uh, some words this week. To make into a sermon and uh, well I just wanted to be obedient so I'm using the words to make a sermon there's a lot of verses tonight so for now I would just leave your Bibles down and pick up your pencil and paper and maybe jot them down if you're interested um, because it's going to be kind of hard to keep up um, uh, but I, I hope I hope that this turns out as well as is what uh, the Lord has claimed to me that it would. So, and I'm sure it will. If He told me this is what to do, I just want to be obedient and do what He has told me. So the first word is nothing. Yeah, yeah. I've been telling you all this for about the last hour now. Nothing is going to be in the sermon. Okay. All right, Brother Keith. That's right. He was like, "Yeah, right." <laughs> what do you mean? Uh huh. I think I told Pastor Steve too, and he was just like, yeah, huh? Uh, yeah. <laughs> but the first word is nothing. And so in Luke 137, well, first of all, let's talk about the word nothing. What does it really mean? We all know what it means, but for just a reminder for us what nothing means is not anything. Not, no single thing. Nil. Nil. Zilch. Yeah, there's a lot of words for it, but it all means the same thing. Nothing. Isn't that right? So in Luke 137, it says, For with God, nothing is impossible. Right, right. What does that mean? That is good news, isn't it? If, if, we're, if we're God's people and, and we know where our place is with the Lord and we know that we're His prized possession... Or one of his prized possessions, anyway. You know, that nothing is impossible with him. Amen. What's that mean? That's right. That means all things are possible with the Lord. Amen. Sometimes you got to take it and turn it around a little bit backwards, isn't that right? All things <coughs> are possible with the Lord. See, a lot of times we can't we can't fathom what the Lord is doing in our minds. Yeah. But the main thing is, is that we need to trust in Him. Because He is all-knowing, all-seeing, all-loving, and He always has our best interest at heart. Isn't that right? Amen. And sometimes we can't see it, and we let, we've been talking about this in church quite a bit let, lately, and sometimes we let fear take over. When we don't see a way out, we don't stand and trust the Lord. But we have to remember that nothing is impossible with God. Amen. Isn't that right? And then John 15, 5, it says, Without me, who is Jesus, you can do nothing. And oh, you know, I have felt that. I am so... You know what? When the day starts to go bad, I have to think back and it's like, did I say my prayers this morning? Did I have I? Sorry, Jesus, I left you out. Not of my prayers because I'm pretty good about getting up and, and and doing my daily prayers in the morning. I like my quiet time in the morning. I I, I but sometimes we we tend to make decisions and stuff and we leave the Lord out of it when. When we know that that he needs to be involved in our decisions, isn't that right? Right. Um, because yeah, I don't know about you, but a lot of times I tend to make poor decisions. But Jesus says, "Without me, you can do nothing." See, we, we're always praying to get people saved, and oh, you know, help my son or help my uh, family or you know. But if we leave Jesus out of the equation, we can do nothing. Right, All we right. can do then is what Satan wants us to do, which is worry, fret, be depressed.
for us. We don't need that, do we? Nope. Are we God's people? We should yep. be joyous people. Amen. Isn't that right? That's right. And then in Philippians 4, 6, kind of leads right into it, it says, Be anxious for nothing. Don't be anxious about anything. Not anything. No single thing. Be anxious about. Don't be stressed out Amen. about things that we can't control. It goes on to say, Pray instead. Amen. <clears throat> Isn't that right? That's right. That's right? Don't be worried and stressed out about anything. Give it to God. That's right. Give it to the Lord. Give it to the one who can do something with the situation or the person or the inconvenience or the whatever the case. Because the Lord's got our backs. Isn't that right? That's Amen. right. Amen. How do you say that, Sister Bai? He got my back. He got us. He got us. us. He got us. us. Well, it's so true. He does got us. He got us with his holy arms. That's right. right. If we allow him to. Yes. If we allow him to. Because we, we, we don't want to leave the Lord out of any parts of our lives now, do we? Nope. And Luke 23, 35 says, And he, being Jesus, said to them, When I sent you without any money bag, knapsack, and sandals, did you lack anything? So they said, nothing. They lacked no, not anything. Not a single thing did they lack. The Lord supplies all of our needs. We read it all the time. We read it in the Bible all the time. We have lessons about it, sermons about it, studies about it. But we tend to get nervous or tend to get um, concerned when the supply isn't there when we think it should be. But the Lord has always supplied, hasn't He? He has always met our needs. When we are walking with the Lord. Isn't that right? And especially if we are doing the Lord's work. If we are doing the Lord's work, He will never let us be without everything that we need. Amen. Amen. He said, nothing. What didn't you have? Nothing. In other words, we had everything we needed. It was amazing. Because... Awesome. We went out and we didn't even have sandals. Mm -hmm. That's right. We had no money. We didn't even have shoes on our feet. We didn't have a backpack. We didn't have any of that stuff. And Lord, you provided. You provided. We yeah. had every single thing yeah. that we needed. Thank you, Lord. We need Thank to you, remember Lord. that in our lives a lot of times. Right. Now, this isn't saying that that we should be lazy all oh, far from it. This is not an opportunity to be lazy. It's an opportunity to see how God works yeah. in our lives Thank if we Lord. allow Him to. Right. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen it in the Bible. Brother Keith may be able to tell me, but people used to always say, God helps those who help themselves. <laughs> see, <laughs> That's not in the Bible. Mm. But it is true. Mm. Because you can't just sit back and expect God to do everything. you got to take the first step. And maybe the second step and the third step too. You've got to take action. We touched on that the other day too. We've got to take action. We, we can't just sit back and say, Well, the Lord said He'd supply. Uh -huh. Kind of reminds me of the joke I think Pastor Steve told at one time that a guy uh, was flooded out and he was on top of his barn or something and and uh, they sent a, a boat to go get him and, and he said, Oh no, my Lord's going to save me. And then, and then uh, they sent a bigger boat and the water was getting higher and they sent a bigger boat and he said, Oh no, my Lord's going to save me. So then the water was so deep he was about ready to go under and they sent a helicopter in and he said, oh no, my Lord's going to save me. Well, he died. And when he went up to the pearly gates, the Lord said, you know, I, I, I don't understand what happened. 
I tried to save you. I sent two boats and a helicopter to save you. But he wouldn't take the action right. to, to be saved. Yeah. So, to be rescued. Yeah. God so, <laughs> but God provided. Exactly. Yeah. Yes, thank you, Sister Sandy. God provided. And we have to understand the good Lord gives us common sense Amen. and he right. gives us discernment also. Amen. So, you know, we, we have to understand when the Lord is providing for us and when he wants us to take action. See, we are to be the Lord's hand and feet and mouth piece right. while we're here on this earth. And we have to understand that. We need to take action. You know, we, we can pray for somebody all that we want, but if they're right in front of us and we don't take any action to talk to them about the Lord, how are they to be saved? That's right. Oh, I'll just let somebody else do it. The Lord put them there for you to take action. And that, and that can go with a lot of different circumstances, too. But nothing is really quite a word sometimes that, that, uh, that we can use in a lot of different circumstances. I was wondering what that noise was. Right. But I told you that nothing, I told several of you that nothing was going to be in the sermon tonight. Right. You, you didn't really believe me. But the next word is anything. The next word is anything. So what does anything mean? It means any object, person, idea, or topic. Anything. Just as it says. Anything. So in John 14, 14... It says, Jesus says, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Yeah. Anything. Now, yeah, there is, there, there is some limitations to that. It has to be in the Lord's will. It has to be a godly request. It has to be a wise request. It's got to be, but you, you understand, we all have discernment here. Is that correct? That's right. That's right. That's right. But ask anything. And he will do it. And we have to remember the first verse that we talked about, for with God, nothing will be impossible. That's right. See, a lot of times I think that we don't ask is because we're like, oh yeah, God wouldn't do that. Anything is possible with That's the Lord. Right. Anything is possible. See, God's behind the scenes. When we pray, God is behind the scenes, right. changing people's hearts, changing people's minds, changing circumstances, changing. And you know what? People say, we don't see miracles these days. But you know what? The Lord is performing miracles left and right all the time just to answer people's prayers. Oh, but he says, if you would only believe, I will answer anything. If you'll only believe. See, a lot of times we just think, Lord's not going to answer that prayer. I'm not even going to ask it. Or if we do ask it, we doubt when we ask it. Come on. Oh, I, you know, uh, uh, some of our kids, we just say, oh, they're too far gone. and the, I don't think the little good Lord can even say them. That's not true. Isn't that right, Pastor Steve? Isn't that right, right. right Sister Sue? Right. Prayers are being answered all the time. And God is changing people's hearts, changing people's minds. That's right. Changing circumstances. Changing all kinds of things right. to answer okay. our prayers. Right. We need to realize that when we go to pray. Anything. Anything. Any object, person, idea, or topic. God has control over everything. Amen. All things. <clears throat> I better be careful or I'll get ahead of myself. In Jeremiah 32, 27, it says, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Is there anything too hard for the Lord? No. no. See, there is nothing too hard for the Lord. Right. There isn't anything 
too hard for him. And he is willing to do things that we think are hard for his children. We may think that it's impossible. Well, how, how is the Lord going to answer prayers if we think it's impossible? He's probably not. Because even Jesus didn't do many miracles in his hometown because there was no belief. Right. See, when we, when we pray, we need to pray with confidence. And don't try to figure out how the Lord is going to do it. Just let Him do it. We, his ways are higher than our ways, and His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. And we have to just believe and let Him do it. Isn't that right? Amen. amen. Alright, I got an amen. Amen. <laughs> amen. Oh, and then in Genesis 18, 14, it says, Is anything too hard for the Lord? Huh. Is anything too hard for the Lord? The same, pretty much the same question again. At the appointed time, I will return to you according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. See, there was a miracle right there. Right. And the funny thing is, is that Sarah, Sarah didn't really believe at first. Right. She actually kind of giggled and went, yeah, an old lady like me, barren, who, uh, who I want kids so bad and we haven't been able to have kids, been trying and trying, and now, and now, right, we're going to have a kid because, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Right, see? But then the Lord said, why did you giggle? I know that you giggled. I know that. See, the Lord knows all of our thoughts. Uh -huh. Even hears our little tiny giggles. Yeah, right. Even if we giggle inside of ourselves. Uh -huh. He knows how much unbelief that we have. Right. But if we have unbelief, we should say, Lord, help my unbelief. Amen. But even more important than that is to get ourselves to a point where we trust God with everything in our lives. We want to be confident in our prayers. We, we want to go to the throne of grace with confidence mm -hmm. and say, Lord, these are my petitions right here. Amen. Now, when we want something done, a lot of times... We really don't care a lot of times how it happens, right? Like if you want your lawn mowed, you know, it's like, just mow it. You know? If we need our if we're not capable of mowing our lawns or if we're not able to mow our lawns or we don't have time to mow our lawns, whatever the thing is, and we want someone to mow our lawns, it's like mow the lawn, you know? We don't care how it gets done. We don't care if you push mow it. Ride and mower, we, you know, just get her done, right? I don't know why I use lawn mowing as an instant. popped up in my head. But anything, we don't care how it's done, and that's how we need to do it. Quit trying to figure out how it's going to get done. Just know that anything is possible with the Lord. That's right. Ugh. Luke 22, 35 says, And he said to them, When I sent you... Oh, we already did that one, didn't we? Oh, wait a minute. And he said to them, When I sent... We did, but we have it again. Yeah. When I sent you out without money bag, knapsack, and sandals, did you lack anything? Mm -hmm. Anything. Did they lack anything? No. They said, No, nothing. Nothing. No. They had everything that they needed. They didn't lack anything. Not one thing did they lack. Anything. Not one thing did they lack. They had everything that they needed. And you know, if we would look to the Lord, Instead of trying to do everything on our own sometimes, yeah, or right. wish that somebody would do it for us, or whatever the case may be, when we look to the Lord, He will provide mm -hmm. anything yeah. that we need. So the next word 
is everything. Okay. Amen. Okay. Everything is a good word. Yes. What's that mean? It means all things. All things. Everything is included, right? But these words that we say all the time, don't we? That's right. We always say these words. They're even in the Bible an awful lot. Believe me, I know. <laughs> Philippians, it's in Philippians 4 6. Everything is. <laughs> Philippians 4 6 Anything says, Oh, there's that nothing word again. Be anxious for nothing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going back to one of those words again. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be known to God. But in everything, in all things, by prayer. Yes. Oh, are you saying that I should pray about what socks to put on in the morning? Hey, it wouldn't hurt. That's right. All things in prayer. At least they match. Yeah, at least they match. Yeah. Put on your holy socks. Yeah, put on your holy socks. That's right. <laughs> Yeah. All thanks. Amen. All thanks with prayer and supplication. What's supplication? That's some stuff added to it. That's what supplication is. We, you know, we can't pray enough. We just can't. We should be in prayer about everything. And there's so much in our lives. And it's such a busy life like what was brought up there's this morning. There are so many things going on. But we should be in prayer about every part of our lives. Amen. And there's things to pray about in every part of the lives. Um, I know I, I work with some guys who really need a lot of prayer every day. I need to go home and pray, pray for them. And every once in a while, i got to pray for them at lunch, even. <laughs> now, do they know that I'm praying for them? No, I probably don't really know, you know. But at the same time, I'm also praying for me. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. but, you know, sometimes I pray about my job. I pray about the things that I'm doing. I pray about on my job. I pray about... Uh, my home life, I pray about, not that I have a bad home life, no, but marriages need prayer, That's right. That's right. whether they're good or bad. <laughs> oh, you two love birds over here. <laughs> all things, all things require prayer. Amen. We should be in prayer about every single part of our lives. We should talk to the Lord, open our hearts up to Him every single day about everything that's happened in the evening, and, and we should open up our hearts to Him in the mornings about every single thing that we know that we're going to do, we might do, uh, just about our day in general. We need to uh, pray for... Uh, Safety and for guidance and for yep. Lord, watch, uh, put a zipper on my mouth. Uh, we have so many things that we need to be prayerful about. Yeah. Amen. Prayer, prayer is the key. Right. Prayer, prayer, and thanksgiving. Yep. You know we should, since we're on this verse right here, and it says. But in everything by prayer and supplication, I already touched on the prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving. Yeah. You know, in our prayers, we we should let the Lord know how thankful we are. That's right. You know, in, you, in, my, in, my, in, in my early Christian life, you know, I kind of forgot about the thankful stuff. But, you know, we could always say in our hearts, the Lord knows how thankful I am. He wants to hear it. He's just like we are. Yes. You know, when we do and do and do for somebody and we don't even get so much as that. Thank you. How does it make us feel? It's kind of like, I don't think they're thankful. And what do you think the Lord says? 
I don't know if they're thankful. That's right. We need to let him know how thankful we are. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. He does so much for us. He does things behind the scenes that we don't even know about. He does just, just to answer our prayers. Or to answer other people's prayers. You know, he is doing... God is busy. He is a busy God. Busy, busy, busy. Even more busy than you, Pastor Steve. Whew. That's busy. <laughs> That's, busy. <laughs> That's busy. How busy is God? Well, you know what? All things are under His control. But He always has time for His children. Amen. You know, He's a busy, busy, busy God. But He always has time for His children. He always has times to listen to our prayers. And He always has times to listen to our praise and our thankfulness. And for um, just, you know, sometimes we need to just say, I love you, Lord. You know, we need to just open our hearts up to Him. Oh, everything. Everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Yes. And then in 1 Thessalonians 5.18, it's kind of the same thing. It says, in everything, everything, give thanks. Well, you're like, well, why? For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. It's the will of God. Give thanks. The Lord wants to hear our thanks. He really does. He, he, he loves us all. He takes care of us all. He's answering prayers and showing us favor and taking care of us. And He's got our back and our front and He, and he holds our hand in, in, our, in our walk with Him. And He does so much for us and He, he can't even get so much as a thank you, Lord. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Tonight when we go home and we say our prayers for the evening and we're laying down, I hope everybody just says, thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for the things that you did for right. this day. Thank you. thank you for the church. Thank you for the people in the church. Thank you for, for and we should do that every single evening because we really do, people. We have so much to be thankful for. And you know what? It just may change things in our lives, too. You know, we should have a spirit of thankfulness in all things. Even when we get those four flat tires, we should be thankful because the Lord may be saving us from a horrendous yeah. wreck. Or He may be, you know what, or a terrible cussing out or yep. whatever the case. God knows what He's doing. He does. Yep. Detours and delays. Isn't that right, Pastor right. Steve? Right. We shouldn't be angry about them. We should be thankful for them. Amen. Do you love the Lord tonight? Yes. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Okay. Uh, everything. Uh, Job 42... One and two, then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that you can do everything. everything. Oh, doesn't that excite you when you think about that though? Lord, you can do everything. The Lord's always already done more than we can even imagine. How do you make stars? How do you make a solar system? How do you make planets? How do you make rain? How do you how do you make all of this? out of nothing at all. The Lord can do everything. If He can pull that off, which has, He did with ease, yes. didn't He? I think He can answer our little requests that we make. But see, the thing is, is we've got to let Him do it in His own way because we have to know that He is all-knowing and all-seeing. He knows our hearts and other people's hearts and He knows our thoughts and other people's thoughts. Let him do it 
His way. Just trust in Him. Trust. When you pray, just know that He is going to answer you, but let Him do it His way. Don't try to figure it out. Don't really try to push Him along in a certain direction. You know what happens to me when I pray about something and I just know He's going to answer it? I used to try to figure out how He was going to do it, who He was going to use, what, uh, what direction He was going to come from, where, how, when, and why. Well, I knew why because I prayed. But you know what? Don't ever do that. Because it will never happen the way that you think it's going to. That's right. Ever. Not, not that I ever found out anyway. Right. The Lord works in mysterious ways, people. Let Him do His work the way that He... You know, and, and you know, I, I was... When that happened a few different times, you know, I was like, I bet God did it a different way. He was probably sitting up there saying, you know what, he thinks he's got it figured out. Now I'm going to do it another way. <laughs> so I figured I was probably making the Lord's work a little bit harder. Not that he couldn't do it any way that he wanted to, because he can do anything with nothing. out of nothing. But the thing is, I just quit trying to figure out how he was going to do it. Because it's not up to me to figure out let him do his work the way that he knows how to work. And we need to quit trying to figure out if he's going to do it, when he's going to do it, or how he's going to do it. You know, he, uh, the when part, he always answers prayers in his perfect timing. His perfect timing. You know, it may not seem very convenient to us, but he's always right on time. Mm -hmm. Every time, he is right on time. And we need to quit trying to figure all that out. How is he going to do it? When is he going to do it? Where is he going to do it? All we need to know is that he can do everything. He will. And he will. And he will, absolutely. And that no purpose of yours can be withheld from you. When, when it's God's purpose, you know it's going to be done. You know it's going to transpire. It's going to take place. It's going to happen. And then, uh, uh-oh. I didn't write down the verse for this one, but that's all right. Somewhere in the Bible. Yeah. <laughs> It says, let everything that has breath praise everything that has breath. Everything that has breath. Everything that breathes, in other words. Genesis somewhere. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. It's pretty early in Genesis too, I think. It might be, uh, anyway. Let everything that has breath. You know, that's people, animals. You know what? Plants even breathe. That's right. Everything that has, every living thing breathes in one way or another, I believe. There's that word again, everything. Everything. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Love that word, everything. When it pertains to God, it fits. Everything. The Lord can do and will do everything. Mm -hmm. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. We lack in that sometimes, I do believe. How would it change our prayer lives if before we even begin to pray and start asking God, can you do this for me? Can you do that for me? Will you? Ha, ha, ha. Can you? Will you? Would you? If we began to praise the Lord. What if we gave Him magnificent praise? What if we lifted up our hands? And gave him praise and thanked him for everything. Everything. Oh, is he deserving of our praise? Amen. I think he's deserving of our praise. Do yeah. so we give him enough praise? Yeah. But how would that change our prayer lives if we gave him praise before we started asking for a bunch yes. of stuff? 
a bunch of things. Let me say, because, you know, sometimes our prayer, to us, our prayers are very serious. They are. They are. And I'm, I'm pretty sure that everyone here doesn't ask for just stuff. Yeah. You know. I think we're all beyond that. We're beyond asking for cars and houses and yep. stuff. Stuff. How would that change our prayer lives? Let's give it a try and see. Let, let's, what, before we start asking God for things that are for, very dear for our, to our hearts, the things that make us nervous, the things that, that make us edgy, the things that, that, uh, that uh, have us concerned, or yeah. the things that really uh, <coughs> make us fearful. Let's just say it. That make us fearful. What if we began to praise Him and praise Him for an hour before we started requesting things of Him? You know what? I think God would like that. I would. I think the Lord would like that a lot because it does change your prayer life. It it it, it changes. You know what? It'll change a lot of things in our lives, too. It'll, it'll change our outlooks on a lot of things. Psalms 150, verse 6, to go with that. Psalms 150, oh, thank verse you, Sister six. Sue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Psalms 1, let everything that has breath praise about the Lord. Yeah. About everything I, I you're right. Yes, yes, yes. Good job. Okay. So this has worked out pretty well for me because I haven't been up here yelling and screaming too much, right? Right. Okay. Right. I've been trying to kind of mellow out on that a little bit. Because I get excited! That's all right! I can't help it. I get excited. <laughs> Stay calm like me, brother. It's good. <laughs> yeah. Chill out. Yeah. Chill out. Well, I've done pretty good today, but we have one more word. Okay. And just a couple more verses. It's getting, getting kind of warm up here. I'm starting to melt like Sister Bi was out there. <laughs> anyway. uh, and the next word is always. 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 Always can be a good word or a bad word. What does always mean? I mean, we know what it means, don't we? It means at all times and on all occasions. Always. At all times and on all occasions. Always. Okay? So, in Leviticus 6.13, I had you in suspense there, didn't I, Sister Sandy? Yes. She was waiting for that verse. So. It's Leviticus 6.13, Sister Vi. She was... <laughs> Thank you. Okay. I hope you all do something with these verses that you're writing down tonight, and I'm sure you will, because otherwise you wouldn't be writing them down. It says this, A fire shall always be burning on the altar. It shall never go out. Okay, I know, I know. Back in Leviticus, they had physical altars, didn't they? They actually built altars out of stone, and they had fires burning on it, and they had a physical animal sacrifice. Isn't that right? Mm -hmm. But this is a different dispens dispensation. And now the altars are in our hearts. Amen. <coughs> They're right here. They're in our hearts. Do you have an altar built for the Lord? I hope you do. I, hope so. I know you do. Amen. I know you do. You, you're all faithful churchgoers. The altar is in our hearts. But what does this say? It should always be burning. Always. Continuously. Never let it go out. Never let it turn off. Never let it... Never. At all times. On all occasions. See, I, I want, I, I'm glad it said on all occasions. Because a lot of times we make excuses why we've let the fire burn down why we get down to just a little tiny glow because of occasions because of circumstances because things happen because and yes they do but that's all the more reason to keep the fire on the altar burning 
hard and strong, so we'll be closer to the Lord. Right. Closer is better right. with the Lord Amen. now, isn't yep. it? Amen. We've got to keep the, the, the altar hot and burning and the fire going all the time in our hearts for the Lord. See, when we let it down, that's when we slide back. That's when we begin to, you've heard it before, backslide. That's when we begin to get depressed. That's when things begin to go wrong in our lives and we can't figure out why. That's when we start to wonder if there's really a God. That's when Satan can start to get a grip on our lives and our minds. Yep. Yep. See, the battle is fought up here. Right. It really is. Because if Satan can get your mind to say, oh, I'm not sure if there's a God, or God won't do that for you, or, or, or God doesn't care, or, or anything like that. You know he's slick. He puts things in our minds all the time. And if we're, our fire is not burning hot on our altar, we might fall for it. When our fire is burning hot, Hot on our altar, though we can go. Ha ha! That's a trick from Satan. Yeah. Ha ha! Next thought, please. You're right. And move along <coughs> to the things of the Lord, because Satan is slick. He can get us if you're not careful. Don't fall in the trap. I did a sermon one time, and that's what it was. Don't fall in the trap. Satan sets traps for us many times a day. Now, doesn't he? Yes. Oh, and you know what? He knows the kind of traps that you might fall for if the fire on your altar isn't burning hot. Yeah. If you don't have it ready to make the sacrifice that you need to make. That's right. See, back then you gave up your, your perfect favorite little lamb or your perfect favorite... Uh, calf or, or whatever. Right. But now we give up desires. Right. <laughs> and if our altar isn't hot so that we can throw those desires and give them to God, sacrifice them to God, and so that we can stay away from them, guess what? We're going to fall into those desires, fall into Satan's trap, and we're done. That's right. And then we're crying. And we're like, I don't know what happened. But we got to keep the fire on our altar That's hot. Right. That's right. So we can make those sacrifices of the desires that Satan is always throwing at us. Right. I have one more verse. Are y'all glad? No, you good. <laughs> okay, one more verse. One more verse. It's 1 Thessalonians 5.16. And it says, and it's an always one. It has a short verse, though. It says, rejoice always. You know, we have so We serve a loving, caring, wonderful God. We don't have any reason, as long as we're doing, as long as we're walking with the Lord, we have no reason to not right. be joyful. Right. We should be rejoicing. We should be happy. We should be glad, joyful. We should be rejoicing that we have power yeah. over Satan. That's right. Not today, That's Satan. Right. That's right. And not never. Gotta have it. Okay. So I hope that everybody got a little good little nugget out of that. If you you know, it might not have all been for you, but hopefully I touched on something there for somebody. To, uh, to grab a hold of. Amen. You know, Thank the you. Lord has been good to us. Amen. He has been very good to us. Yes. And all things are possible hmm. to the Lord. So right. let's remember that. Let's just keep our heads up. Let's walk to the throne room with confidence. Let's continue to praise Him. Let's continue to uh, know that He answers everything that he can do everything let me put it that way that he can do everything and he knows all things he even knows our hearts and our thoughts so 
anyway, Amen. let's leave tonight rejoicing. Let's praise the Lord. If anybody needs prayer tonight, now would be a good time to come up. Um, God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good.